Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to accomplish one main thing. We're going to add some JavaScript to our front end show page in order to send um, requests whenever we click on these little vote buttons that we just added. So whenever I click on the plus or the minus, I want to send a um, post request. Step one is going to be to create a JavaScript file to go along with this um, view, with our show page view. And up until now, we've not had to actually make any front end JavaScript. All of our JavaScript's been on the back end. So let's go ahead and do that. We need to make directory inside of public and call it JS. I'm going to touch public slash JS comics underscore show dot JS. And this name is on purpose. You want to, generally speaking, name the JavaScript file the same as the file that it's attached to, just to kind of keep it straightforward and keep it easy to understand, hey, where does this go? So we've made that. Let's open it up and just do an alert. Works. And then we have to attach it inside of comics underscore show. Down here at the very bottom, do a script tag, source equals slash JS slash comics underscore show dot JS. And remember the reason we don't have to put public is because Express is serving all the contents of the public folder. So save that. No daemon. Refresh our page, see if it works. Nope, didn't do what it's supposed to. Did I not save everything correctly? We have a script source equals slash JS slash comics underscore show dot JS. Did I name it wrong? I named it wrong. I named it comic show. So we need to move public slash JS slash comic show to public slash JS slash comics underscore show dot JS. Start my server again. I always forget to do that. Refresh. There it works. All right, cool. So now it is linked. We can get rid of that alert and then we can start programming. So let's go ahead and outline what we're gonna do. Well, first we're going to select things because we're gonna need to select those buttons. We'll call select elements. And then after we select those elements, we're gonna to have to add event listeners. Let's go ahead and select them. Const upvote btn equals document dot get element by ID upvote btn. And that's just because I have the ID over here wherever it is for let's see the upvote button. Where is it? That's the comment button. So here's the plus ID is upvote button. ID for that one is downvote button. I'm just going to duplicate that. Downvote B oops. Downvote BTN. Downvote BTN. And I still have comic show open instead of comics show. So I'm just gonna paste that over there. No, don't save the old one, save the new one. Right, and then let's refresh, make sure it works. Everything is still fine. Let's try and call downvote button. And it's this thing right there, upvote button, and it's that thing right there. So we know they both work, they were selected correctly. Perfect. Now I want to add event listeners to these, and really we're just gonna focus on the upvote one for now, and then we can come back in the following video and add it to the downvote button. So, Upvote btn dot add event listener where we're listening for clicks and then we're going to run an async function to do something. Right now, console.log console.log clicked. Refresh. Quiet you. There we go. Clicked. Okay, so it's linked. It's always a good idea to make sure things are linked before building everything out. So what we need to do inside of here is actually send the fetch request. So let's look at the MDN docs on fetch. I already have pulled up and we're going to send a post request. Up until now we've used fetch, but we've always just sent a get request. Whenever you're sending a post request, you have to add additional options. So by default, fetch will take, let's see, where is it? 
fetch takes a URL and then you chain on these dot then things. So whenever you just put a URL and only put one option, fetch will send a get request. In order to send a post request, you have to add a second option, which is a um, object of all these different options. And some of these we're gonna set, some of them we are not. We're gonna set the method, we're gonna set the headers, and we're gonna set the body. We're not gonna set any of the rest of these. So I like to set this as a separate um, object and then pass that object into the fetch call. So first we're going to build fetch options and then we're going to actually send fetch request. So the options, I'm just going to be const options equals an object. And as I said, we're going to do the method, the headers, and the body. Method is going to be post headers and this is where you basically just have to copy and paste this because we are sending JSON the headers are going to be that we don't need that comment but there's the headers and then the body is going to be an object and because this is an upvote we're just going to say the vote is equal to up now this is not good enough because this needs to be JSON. And my GUM just restarted for some reason. This needs to be JSON. So we need to JSON.stringify that. So we'll save. And GUM, let's see where I am. So can I go up? What's going on? I'm just gonna refresh this page because it kind of seems to have crapped itself. Be right back. A few moments later. All right, this has reloaded, so let's run our server again and see what's going on. So let's refresh. There we go. Mm, it's not doing anything. Something would. Uh, hold on. What's happening? Let's see. Address already. Oh my gosh. So because Gloom crashed, it still has this um, process running. So let's find it. I did a video on this. It's been a while now. Um, but basically, yeah, it's got a rogue process going that we need to find and kill. So sudo net stats ltnp, we're going to pipe that into grep, dash w, looking for 3,000. Don't worry if you don't understand this. Um, I talk about it in the video about what all of it means, but we basically just have to find it. So there is the PID, so kill 2355. Now, I should be able to do no daemon, and it should work. There we go. Okay, sorry for that little segue. Let's refresh the page. So everything still works, but nothing's being sent. Why not? Oh, it's because I'm not actually doing anything. I built the options, but I never actually sent the fetch request. Gloom crashing threw me off. So let's go ahead and send that fetch request. This is going to be an await, because we want to wait for the response before we do anything. Fetch. The fetch URL is going to be slash comics slash vote. And the options are going to be the options that we just built right up here. So after we fetch that, we want to then take the data that is returned and basically just convert it into JSON. So return data.json called as a function. Then, oops, dot then that response we're just going to log console.log response and if there's an error console.log that error so save let's go ahead and try and send it i'll go ahead and let you know this is not going to work think about why see if you can figure it out so let's hit that and look at our console and we've got unexpected token less than in JSON at position zero. So the first item is a less than sign. In JSON, the first item should be a curly bracket. So why is this happening? Think about it, see if you can figure it out. Basically, what's happening is we're not logged in. So what is happening is this our server is returning an HTML document, the login page, instead of the JSON that we're expecting. That's why it had it starts with a less than sign because the login page is an HTML document which starts with less than. So let's log in. Test, test. Come in here and now try it. Click. 
Messages voted. All right. So we are hitting that route. Perfect. But there is still a problem. There is still an issue going on, and I'll go ahead and show it to you. Right now, if you'll notice, inside of our body, we're sending vote equals up. So let's look at our route. Inside of our routes, comics, come down to vote, and let's just log that vote. Where is it? Here it is. Let's just console.log the body. Console.log request.body. What we expect to see is an object that says vote equals up, basically. Uh, what did we crash for? It's already did that not did it not die? Go back, find the process again. Kill. Maybe do I have to pseudo kill? I shouldn't. 2008. Run no demon. I may have to restart my instance, but hopefully not. All right, so it's running. Let's refresh. Let's go ahead and log back in as test. Come in here and hit upvote. So we still receive message voted, but let's look at the console. It's empty. Our our body is empty. Request.body right there. It doesn't have anything in it. This is a very confusing issue for a lot of people. Um, the basically the problem is is based on cores. If you're not familiar with cores, it's it's um, base it's cross origin stuff. It's kind of a it's a security measure put in place to kind of combat cross side scripting and other um, hacking methodologies. But what it comes down to is that because in our JavaScript here, cores takes our nice application.json header and converts it to just a text. And the problem with that is that our server is expecting JSON, but is receiving text, so it doesn't know what to do with it, so it just leaves it as blank. So what we have to do is to basically tell Express to handle text data as JSON. Fortunately, this is relatively simple to do. So we just have to come into you close, come into app.js, and add another um, configuration. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn off Morgan while I'm in here because it's it's cool, but I don't need it right now. So I'm going to comment out both its import and where it's being used. And then inside of my express config, I'm going to add another line. App.use express.json, where type is an array, application slash json, text slash plain. And this is just an express setting. You can dive into the express docs if you're interested in this. Man, this is annoying that this is it's happening. I will restart this before the next video. Kill 3202. And I'll just use node this time, so maybe maybe no daemon is causing the issue. I don't know. But now that we've done that, now that we've set um, app.use and basically told it, hey, treat um, plane as JSON to treat both application JSON and text plane as JSON is basically what this is telling it. Let's refresh, log back in. Click our button. We'll still see voter down here, but now let's look inside of here, and we got the actual request.body. We got the username, we got the email, and we got the vote being up. That is the important part. So now it is working as we want it to. And that is it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and do git status. We need to git add app.js, git commit, set plain text to JSON handling, git status. I'm going to add comics. And what did we do inside of comics? This is what's nice about these little highlights. You can see exactly what happened. Um, where you can see the lines where they happened at least. Inside of comics, all we did was just add a console.log body. So, so git commit message of logging git status git add views slash comics underscore show and inside of comics show what did we do? Talk find it. We just linked. Yeah, we just linked the script. I'm pretty sure. I don't know why it's not showing over there, but 
git commit link js git status and the only thing left is that javascript file git commit add a basic js for vote requests should be clean now git push origin master and that is it for this video we did a few things first we created a new um, comics underscore show javascript file that is linked to the comics underscore show ejs file its purpose is to send fetch requests whenever the user clicks on a button um, as part of that we built the options and then we built the fetch request and right now it's not actually doing anything other than sending that request it's just constantly logging the response but we're going to use that in later videos to actually update the UI. We ran into an issue with the options um, having to do with cores and the fact that the header needs to be JSON, but cores doesn't accept that whenever it's a cross-origin request. So we had to come into app.js and set the option to handle text plain as JSON. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to help. Thanks.